Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back with a slightly delayed uh, haul video for all the books that I procured in the month of May of 2019. So there's a good amount of books right beside me here that I want to show off, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly so we can get through everything. Um, there's a lot of new things that came out, but I'm also excited about a lot of things that were older releases. So I'm going to start real quick with a stack of manga that I've got in front of me. Run through these real quick. These are all new releases for this first stack. Uh, first, I've got Gantz. The Omnibus Edition Volume 3. This collects volumes 7 through 9 of the original series, still published by Dark Horse. I've got High Rise Invasion. Uh, this is the fourth collection, collecting the original volumes 7 and 8 uh, of the Japanese editions. Fun little series uh, from Seven Seas. I'm really enjoying it myself. I recommend it if you're into... Uh, Honestly, I don't even know. Kind of, It's kind of a terror series. I, I don't know how to describe it quickly. Um, I've got the most recent volume of Battle Angel Alita Mars Chronicle. This is volume 6 of the currently ongoing Alita storyline. Uh, I'll say more about this in a second uh, on the topic of something else Alita related. And then we got uh, some Shonen Jump releases, Black Torch Volume 4. This is the penultimate volume of this series that was canceled in the magazine, so I'm very curious about uh, how the ending is going to be, if the uh, final volume is going to give a good conclusion or not. Uh, Demon Slayer Volume 6, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Um, this is rather popular right now since the anime has been airing uh, recently. I know that they've gotten to the introductions of a couple of uh, the main characters, in the most recent episode, so I think that maybe volume three or so is where the, the anime is right now. Uh, anyway, I really enjoy the series. Fun story, fun characters, good artwork. Uh, Dragon Ball Super, this is... Uh, actually, this was a good volume. It ends the Goku Black arc, um, the Future Trunks arc. It kind of ends it in a different way than what I remember from the anime from a few years ago, or a couple years ago, and then it starts up on a manga original arc. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting to see an arc from the manga that was not in the anime that deals more with the, uh, the other universes before going into the Tournament of Power. Uh, Dr. Stone Volume 5. This, of course, has an anime that's a, right around the corner. It's coming out, I believe, in July. I've really been enjoying this series. Uh, it's five volumes in right now. It's by the same writer as Shield 21. Uh, Haikyuu Volume 32. I've still yet to have gotten caught up with this series, but I... I need to add it onto my list very soon after I get caught up with some other stuff. Uh, and then I've got One Piece Volume 90. 90 volumes of One Piece now, and it officially is in the Wano arc. So we no longer have the uh, the New World arc uh, name on top of the, the title there. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, of course, we're a couple of volumes behind the releases in Japan. Um, I'm probably 20 or so chapters behind of the Japanese release uh, just kind of fell off the, the the wagon when I moved out here uh, from our house out in Austin so uh, I need to get back on that pretty soon and then One Punch Man uh, volume 16 not much to say if you know what One Punch Man is you probably already know if you're a fan or not and it's still con continuing along uh, as it has been uh, Radiant volume 5 by the uh, French creator Tony Valente uh, this one, Volume 4, is where I really, really started to warm up to it. I really enjoy the character designs. The world is interesting. It's a very dense series with a lot of text in each one of its bubbles, so it takes a lot longer to read than a typical shonen manga does. And I've got Grand Blue Dreaming. Uh, this is from Kodansha Comics. This is the comedy series about a couple of guys in a diving school who get up to a bunch of hijinks, uh, including, or fueled often by uh, lots of drinking of alcohol. Um, very funny series. I've really been enjoying it. Uh, always enjoy having new volumes of that. Yurisei Yatsura Volume 2. This is the two-in-one edition from Viz uh, on the signature line. Of course, this is uh, the series from uh, Rumiko Takahashi, which preceded uh, Ranma One Half. Uh, it has a lot of similar tones as that series. It does focus on, um, you know, kind of comedic moments with uh, love triangles and stuff like that. So there's, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's a fun series. It's, it's you know, along the lines of Ranma, if you enjoyed that, you'll enjoy this. And this was a really exciting release for me for this month, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable Volume 1 in hardcover. It is a two-in-one release, so we should be seeing uh, nine of these since there was 18 volumes in Japan. It is signature-sized, like an oversized 
uh, hardcover edition with some colored pages inside. Not not a lot, just some stuff like that. Um, I really enjoyed this uh, story. I'm really excited to own it in the manga finally, and I'm hoping that this continues along and releases parts five and beyond after this is concluded. And then I got volume five of the Full Metal editions of Full Metal Alchemist. These are kind of one and a half volumes of the uh, paperbacks collected into each of these hardcovers uh, featuring oversized artwork and um, just a, a nice package altogether hardcover edition of this great manga series. And then finally from my uh, or one more new release on this stack, I think I have a couple more on the next stack, is um, Sailor Moon the Eternal Edition Volume 4 from Kadansha. This is one of the big ol' volumes that's about the size of a standard American trade paperback, so pretty big size for manga. Uh, and then I think this is the last of my new releases, and that is Elfin Lead Omnibus Volume 1 from Dark Horse. Uh, there should be four of these volumes. I never actually watched the anime, but I heard enough about it that I was intrigued and decided that I would pick up the new uh, Dark Horse release when it came out. And now for some older manga releases. Um, I mentioned Alita. I would talk about more later. I got volumes uh, 16 and 19 of Battle Angel Alita uh, Last Order. These were the only two that they had available out of uh, 16 through 19 on in-stock trade. So I still need 17 and 18. I did, I think... I don't even remember if I got it this month or a previous month or whatever, but I did get all five of those omnibus editions for very, very cheap. So I was really excited about that, and I'm excited to eventually revisit the world of Alita because I really loved that original series when I read it uh, earlier this year. And then the next chunk of books, excuse me while I pull these over here because they're larger. These are heavier books. Um, Blade of the Immortal Omnibus. So I had been slowly grabbing these basically whenever I found them for cheap and I happened to find uh, a couple of these for pretty good prices. Volume 5 here, uh, Volume 6, I think both of those were on eBay for really cheap prices. Volume 7 I ordered on Amazon originally and they sent me, uh, I had ordered 3 and 7 on Amazon because 3 got restocked and then Amazon took over a month to tell me that they weren't going to be able to ship this to me. And so I went to, you know, five minutes away, there's a Barnes and Noble and they had one copy of it. So I picked it up there. Uh, and then volume eight, which gets me caught up with the current releases of these Blade of the Immortal Omnis. Uh, there are two more omnibus to be published from Blade of the Immortal uh, from, from Dark Horse. And that will be the entirety of the series. Uh, let's see, next I'm going to move over to my, I only have a couple of DC books. And then I have a lot of Vertigo and then a, uh, a few things from other publishers as well. So let me show from uh, from DC real quick. I have one paperback, and that's the newest volume of The Flash by Mark Wade, volume six. This sits right up. It gets right up next to the uh, Flash by Morrison and Millar uh, paperback. So this kind of fills that entire gap leading up right there. And then there would be a couple more, at least a couple more volumes of material uh, for a volume seven and eight but I think Volume 7 got cancelled and I don't know if it's going to be resolicited anywhere or not. I'm hoping it is because it would be nice to have everything um, out there at some point, but I mean, we'll see. DC's really trigger happy with the cancellations. And then I have one Omnibus edition from DC and that's one that I was really excited about. Super shiny. Uh, Wonder Woman by Brian Atterello and Cliff Chang. So uh, this collects the entire New 52 series. It was one of my favorite New 52 titles, so I was really excited. I did have the absolutes, but Omnibus is my preferred format, so I was excited to uh, sell those down into the Omnibus format, and it is a really, let me show it again, it is a really pretty book. Let me try and have less glare on it by holding it at an angle. Um, really nice spine, nice image on the back. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time showing the interior artwork. Uh, right now because I want to get through the rest of my books, but trust me. It's very very attractive um, Next I've got so this was These are not new releases But this was a series that I had been collecting for a while in single issues I collected some of the hardcovers and then I neglected it for a while and I decided all of a sudden You know what? I'm gonna grab all these hardcovers because I noticed in stock trades had a lot of the ones that were um, 
kind of getting harder to find, and that's Fables. So I already had volumes one through six. This is volume eight. So they didn't have seven. Seven's really hard to find. Uh, I've been looking for it, so if anyone has a, a copy, let me know, or if anyone finds one that can be mailed to me, let me know. Uh, but so I started buying those. I got volume eight here. I'm trying to find a good place to set these. Uh, volume nine right here. And these volumes right here, these are some really uh, some of the really good material, if I recall correctly. It's been a while since I read this series, but I think that was some good material. Uh, volume 10, this was not so great. This was the crossover with Jack of Fables. Uh, I don't think anyone really enjoyed that crossover, to be honest. Uh, volume 11, we got volume 12 here. This was some pretty solid material as well. And then I think this next book, volume 13, was probably the last chunk of material from that series that I actually read uh, as it was coming out in singles, and then I decided to stop picking it up. So eventually when I get back to reading this, volumes 14 and uh, 15 here, final volume 15, are going to be new material for me that I haven't experienced before. So I'm really excited about that. I'd really like to do a whole read through through the entire 150 issues of that series, all 15 hardcovers, because um, I really did love that before. And I know that a lot of people are not too happy with the ending of the series, and I never got to experience it, so I'm excited to experience it myself. And then from uh, a couple other publishers, I had one book from Valiant, was in the Imperium Deluxe Edition. This is uh, written by Josh Dessart. This has the uh, antagonist from the, what was it called, Harbinger series is, uh, is in this book. So I really enjoyed Har Harbinger, so I'm really excited to check this one out uh, as kind of a follow-up to that. And then I've got a couple of books from Image. The third and final uh, murder edition hardcover of Nailbiter. This was a really great series. I really loved this one as it was coming out. Uh, Josh Williamson, this was probably my favorite work by him. Uh, the ending was... It was good. It wasn't great for a series as good as it was. I thought the ending could have been a lot stronger. And then I still haven't unwrapped this one, but I've got Saga Hardcover Volume 3. <clears throat> this leads us up right to the hiatus that the series is currently on. Um, I don't know how much longer the series is meant to go on, uh, but it's been great the entire time, in my opinion. Uh, fantastic artwork by Fiona Staples, great characters, really intriguing story, and a really well-built world from, uh, from Brian K. Vaughn. Um, and then as per usual, they have some sort of odd image on the front of the hardcover. I think the first one had the, uh, breastfeeding. I don't remember. I think the second one was picking the nose and this one has a bloody tooth on the front. So fun stuff there. And then for my Marvel stuff, so I have, my Marvel is in like a small stack on the top and then I have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so let me just get into it. It's just kind of different the way I've arranged this. So First, I've got a couple of uh, books. These are newer releases that are not related to the majority of the rest of this stack. Uh, and these are Gambit, the King of Thieves. This is the entire run by James Asmus. It was three paperbacks. They've condensed that into a single complete collection. Uh, so with this book, they have, if I'm not mistaken, every Gambit story has now been recollected into some sort of new complete collection paperback, which is really cool. And then also we have the third hardcover of Thor by Jason Aaron and Russell Dodderman. This is the conclusion of this Thor series, the one that focuses on uh, Jane Foster's version of Thor. So it collects 13 through 23 and then 700 through 706 plus a couple of one shots uh, from that series. And it is some great material. This leads right into, uh, spoiler alert, the return of the original Thor, which leads into the whole War of the Realms uh, event that's going on right now, which is leading in itself into the finale of Jason Aaron's long-running Thor. So I'm really excited about that. And then before I get into the real meat of my... Uh, <clears throat> the real meat... Before I get into the real meat of my Marvel... Uh, haul. I've got one last thing that's unrelated to the rest of it, and then I'll talk about what my big theme for the rest of my Marvel from May 
Hall was, and that's just uh, one volume of She-Hulk, Lady Liberators by uh, Peter David. I've been slowly collecting volumes of this series and volumes of various Hulk titles uh, throughout the past several months or so. Uh, but anyway, so the rest of my collection is all Spider-Man themed. Um, I hold a lot of Spider-Man, which makes sense uh, because we've got, you know, of course I would be tempted to get into more Spider-Man stuff because we have uh, two Spider-Man Omnis. Uh, at least one of these Spider-Man books is a new, two, two thick paperbacks here were both recent releases. There was other paper man, or paperback Spider-Man books that came out that I passed on. And then uh, we have the movie coming out next month in July. So a lot of Spider-Man stuff to be excited about. But what really got me was I realized how much or how close I was to owning, you know, big, solid, complete chunks of Spider-Man comics. So I decided to go ahead and start searching out for some of the books that I had missed. So real quick, um, this one, a couple of tangentially related spider books venom by colin bunn complete collection um i wasn't as big of a fan of colin bunn's run on venom as i was with rick remenders but it was still a solid series and i really enjoyed the character i have the two complete collections by rick remender but i had passed on the colin bunn collection and i found it for a really good price so i decided to jump on that this of course collects the entire rest of the series after remender left so it is a pretty thick collection right there and then the other tangentially related one is Spider-Man Noir, the complete collection. Uh, this is a new edition that collects both of the Spider-Man Noir miniseries, uh, as well as some additional material like Edge of Spider-Verse number one, uh, Spider-Geddon, Spider-Man Noir video comic, and material from Spider-Verse team up number one. Sorry, I was just reading straight off of the back of this book. But the two main miniseries, uh, two four-issue minis written by David Hine, uh, introduced us to the Noir universe in Marvel, and then of course that inspired the character who would then appear across the Spider-Verse uh, comic, the Spider-Geddon comic, and the uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie that came out uh, recently. So I was really excited to have that because I've never read those stories before. And then one more new Spider-Man book, and that is uh, Spider-Man Light in the Darkness. So this kind of goes with the next chunk of, or one of the chunks of Spider-Man books that I uh, I grabbed recently as this is collecting uh, the first grouping of issues written by Paul Jenkins uh, when he took over on the Spectacular Spider-Man series. So I'm hoping that this means Marvel is going to be going forward and, and collecting all of Paul Jenkson, Jenkins' material into these nice thick hardcover, or sorry, nice thick paperbacks. Um, because a lot of the stuff from his first run with uh, Spectacular Spider-Man is actually not collected. It's collected in a very spotty manner, so it would be nice to see another one of these books collect the rest of that material. Um, the next chunk, let me go chronologically with these. So there's a chunk of material that I'm missing that would fall between the Ben Riley saga and then the beginning of the next volume of Spider-Man. Um, so I was able to find one of those for a really good price, and that is uh, Spider Hunt Paperback. This is a crossover that features issues of Sensational, Amazing, Spectacular, and the Adjectiveless Spider-Man series from that time. There are a couple of other paperbacks from this gap that I'm looking for, um, Gathering of Five and uh, Identity Crisis. I'll probably pick those up whenever I find them for a price as good as I got this one, which was like, I think, $12. Um, but until then, I don't want to spend too much because I have a feeling that all of this stuff is going to be wind up uh, re recollected either in some sort of thick paperback or in some sort of uh, hardcover edition down the line. Directly following up on that, I've got the three volumes of Spider-Man The Next Chapter. This is uh, a series of three volumes which collect Howard Mackey's run on Spider-Man. Not his only run, but his run on Spider-Man, starting with volume, uh, volume two, number one. Uh, and Peter Parker Spider-Man, uh, I don't know if that's volume two, but a number one. So these have, starting from number one going forward, each of these three volumes collect material from both of those two series, all written by Howard Mackey. And then that wraps up, uh, there's three volumes of that, Spider-Man Next Chapter, volume three. And then to go alongside with those, I also picked up Revenge of the Green Goblin, and this goes up to Amazing Spider-Man 29, also collects uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man 25 and 29. So going up through 29 means that this is gonna sit right up next to one of those omnibus that I was talking about, and that is the Amazing Spider-Man 
by J. Michael Straczynski, Volume 1. This should be Volume 1 of 2. This one starting with uh, issue number 30 going through 58, and then it gets renumbered to 500, and this collects up through 514. So this has the entire uh, run by Straczynski and John Romita Jr., who had been doing the artwork on the book uh, during the Howard Mackey stuff, and it goes into material with art by, uh, sorry, uh, Mike Deodata Jr. Um, the second volume would collect the latter half of all this, which would include stories like Civil War, um, Back in Black, uh, the other, and then it should end with the uh, very uh, critically panned and uh, panned by fans as well, uh, One More Day storyline. So that is a really fun book to have. I haven't had these stories in oversized editions yet, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and really hope that they pump out a volume two sometime soon. Um, and then the other omnibus that I got uh, that came out this month was Amazing Spider-Man volume four. This, of course, collects uh, the next chunk of issues of Amazing Spider-Man comics, including the end of Stan Lee's run and the beginning of Jerry uh, Conway's run. Jerry Conway being one of my absolute favorite Spider-Man writers of all time. This includes the uh, famed death of Gwen Stacy storyline, so that's something uh, to point out in here, and then it also collects the first appearance of the Punisher, which is another big thing to point out in this book, uh, along with appearances of a lot of other great villains such as uh, Mysterio and the Vulture and others. Uh, this collects issues 105 through 142, as well as uh, Giant Size Superheroes number one, Marvel Superheroes number 14, and this I believe takes us up to, if you're looking at Marvel Masterworks, uh, there's going to be a gap from volume 15, or this collects uh, 1 through 4 of the Omnis, collects 1 through 14, I think, of the Marvel Masterworks, and then there's, <coughs> excuse me, something like 15 through 21, I think. Yeah, 15 through 21. And then right after volume 21, which is, I think, an upcoming release, we've got, um, that's right where it starts with the, the Roger Stern omnibus. So pretty exciting um, that they're filling in all those gaps. I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm not one for the Masterworks, but to me, what it says is that there's probably going to be Amazing Spider-Man omnibus volume 5 and 6, and then it's going to bleed right into those other existing things like Stern and uh, eventually, you know, fill in the gaps between Stern and McFarlane, and they've got the, you know, McFarlane and the Larson, and eventually, hopefully, Bagley, and there's just a lot of attention being paid to the Spider-Man books right now, and I'm really here for it. And then to top off with a, you know, a final cherry on top, the whole Spider-Man Sunday, I also grabbed the Spider-Man uh, Red Goblin oversized hardcover. This collects the last chunk of uh, issues that Dan Slott wrote uh, on Amazing Spider-Man. <clears throat> And I did not pick this up when it originally came out because I was convinced that they were going to sol uh, solicit this into another hardcover that was going to fill the gap between Volume 3 and this one and something, but it never happened, and I felt dumb, and I decided to pick it up because it started to get harder to find, and In Stock Trade still had a copy it left available. So anyway, that is everything that I grabbed during the month of May in 2019, uh, with the exception of a few volumes of manga for a series that I am intending on doing a review of very soon, so I wanted to keep that kind of a surprise and not talk about that so much. Um, but otherwise, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for spending this uh, time with me watching me talk about these new books. If there's anything that you're curious about, anything you want to see um, a little bit more of, let me know. Um, I can make a video, review, overview, whatever you need. Uh, catch me back here pretty soon for the manga review video that I was just teasing. I don't want to reveal exactly what it is because I want to come out of left field and uh, I think it'd be pretty fun for it to be a kind of a surprise. Um, but I will have a another haul video for the books that I purchased in June. Should be out in the beginning of July. So have uh, definitely expect that. Uh, and then of course you can always find me on the Omnibus Collectors Network on YouTube, uh, where I will be joining the uh, the guys every uh, pretty much every Thursday. They put out videos. Uh, Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays, and then also we have the Fangirls Assemble show. Uh, they do Sunday nights, so definitely subscribe to this channel, subscribe to that channel, give us some love. Uh, 
and let us know what kind of uh, content you want to see over there. Otherwise, again, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight and uh, or whatever time of day it is for you. And we'll see you next time.